Here we have a Lenovo Smart Clock with Google Assistant. Let's talk about it. Hey there, and jroot22.com here with a product review. And today's product review is the Lenovo Smart Clock with Google Assistant. It's a little tiny little clock. I'm not gonna go into specs or unbox it. It's already in use. The box is empty. I hate unboxings. You wanna know why I hate unboxings? I, this wasn't in my script, but people love that feeling of opening up a product. Oh, I, I don't, I, I'm not part of that generation. I hate unboxing things. I have a box here for my Lenovo yoga, yoga tab and I just fucking ripped the shit open. I, I really just don't, care about unboxings. I, I just don't, uh, I don't get it. But anyway, that's a rant. So against our better judgment, we now have this device. I have it because um, it sort of came free with that tablet I bought. And I got the tablet for like half price. I think I paid under $200 for this really decent uh, Android tablet with good, I wanted a tablet with good speakers so I don't have to deal with uh, Bluetooth and all these extra cords and wires and charging up. This tablet has good enough speakers to be able to watch press conferences or whatever you want to check out in your kitchen while you're cooking uh, without needing a, a second speaker. So it's good enough. I like it. It's cheap and it works. But um, I've sort of been on the uh, like anti a little. I'm a little luddite when it comes to these smart assistants. We had an Alexa, which I I kind of took away from the family because I don't like that thing plugged in and listening to people. But I'm going to give this uh, Google a, or I'm giving this Google Assistant a try. It's a tiny little screen. There's no video camera on the front. Can't use it for video calling, which I don't do anyway because I don't call anybody. Um, but this, I, I've been looking into it. I'm like, what can I do with this? Can I make my life better truly without adding more complications and more need to talk to a freaking computer device? Um, you can ask the weather, which I, I typically know the weather anyway, because I, I just look on my computer and I get the whole seven-day forecast on uh, weather underground or whatever I'm using, windy. And you can see a chart and you can understand, okay, this weekend's going to be kind of rainy, you know, whatever. I don't need to ask, hey, what's the, what's the weather? Today's going to be 91. Like, I, I really don't care about that. And for people who use their digital calendars, I mean, I'm not that busy that I need to keep calendar of meetings and I have a pretty good uh, little calendar up here and I remember everything so I don't need to rely um, on on a computer device to keep my schedule um, I rely on this device and that's good to keep this thing worked out because when you start relying on this this thing gets out of shape but um, and then there's like one of the other things oh find me a recipe for the turkey dumplings or whatever like I already know how to cook. I don't need a recipe from anybody. I use my own imagination and I, I don't feel the need. My life isn't that boring that I have to find something exciting to cook. I like cooking what I cook. And then they have music. I mean, this thing has a very substandard. It's not like high fidelity, but I, I don't like the way you have to listen to music. It has to be some sort of streaming service like Spotify or Pandora, which I know a lot of people like. I just don't. I have my set of music that I like and I am at the very least I will, I will, today for instance I went on YouTube and I listened to some classic rock playlist um, and there were no commercials because I used a good browser and I didn't get bothered and it, I was able to listen to 50 songs or there was a choice of 50 songs and I was fine. But I found two things that I, I, I think are okay with this, maybe three. Um, we have a problem in this house with shopping lists. We have a little like toilet paper practically right on these crumpled up lists with like tiny hieroglyphic handwriting and they're, they're all over the place and they get crumpled up. So I started uh, creating a, a shopping list. So if I'm laying in bed, I'm like, oh, I got to add that. I remembered to add that to the shopping list. I'll tell this stupid box to, to add it to my shopping list. And I, my, I'll tell my tablet to add it to the shopping list or my phone if I'm out and about or in the garage or somewhere and I remember... Um, that I need something, I'll add to the shopping list. And it kind of collects it in a central location. And then, for instance, when I have to go on ShopRite's uh, Shop From Home, I have my list on my phone and I order the stuff. That's kind of neat. I guess I could just learn how to become a better note taker and have a, a central notebook somewhere. But that's all. I, I mean, the shopping list. So <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a $50 shopping list. But one other thing I, f I just found out today that it does, you, if you can make a phone call 
just right there. There's no phone line or cell in your bedroom. You just, you can tell this clock to call whoever's in your contact list, which is kind of interesting, I guess. I thought of it, it's like, say I, like I was like that old lady, I've fallen and I can't get up. I can call my own home phone from this thing and tell somebody in the house that I'm stuck in the, the bedroom. Um, and one other thing I, I do is I, I occasionally I'll, tell, I'll talk to it and say, hey, set an alarm for eight o'clock in the morning and it'll wake me up, which is, I could do that already with my phone, but that's, that's kind of neat, I, I might say. But that's all I found useful. I went online to see on the Google Assistant uh, homepage to see what it is. And it's all really kind of superficial garbage. Oh, check my stock portfolio. Why, why don't you just check your smart portfolio on your phone or on your computer? Why do you need to check it? It's all just checking. Check the scores. Check this. Check that. Um, it, I guess you could do oh, turn off. I, I might try that one day. Like turn off the, uh, the lights. And you need special light bulbs and and with Wi-Fi bulbs and I mean one thing I might forget to turn off every now and then is the um, the um, floodlights in the house but I, I don't know I don't think I, I like the thermostat we don't have any of those smart thermostats oh, turn the uh, air conditioning down in the living room and set the living room in the 22 degrees or whatever it is so I'm not really a big fan of anything automated it's, I don't really think it's worth the headache first of all you have to put all this money into it and I don't think it really saves, I don't know what the return on investment is, but it's probably um, very slow. You know, 10 years maybe, 20 years, you might save the money that you paid for it. So I'd rather just not do it. Um, if my thermostat, one of my thermostats breaks, however, the, one of the ones we have in the house, I may put a smart one in that I can do with my phone, but I'm not going to have it connect up to these uh, automated um, systems. Um, and also, they, like the, your news options on these things, it's like all fake news, all this BS mainstream media, which I don't, uh, don't want to hear because it's nonsense. It truly is. I think that's going to change sometime in the you know, relatively near future. I still like using my computer and going to a website on my own with my fingers and, and searching um, instead of having this thing curate, curate the, uh, the news for me. I, I, I'll find it myself. And I, I really do think the fact that people are constantly checking everything. It, I think that's a, that's a pandemic on its own. It's a, a first world mental pandemic. I gotta check this, check that, check that. The people are like, like robots now, they're constantly checking, checking their messages, checking their social media, checking, checking, checking. What the hell are they checking? Are they checking into real life ever? I really just don't get it. Uh, but we're gonna keep this thing. Oh, one other thing this stupid thing does. It reads children's stories. So parents have gotten so lazy. They already have 900 million um, automated things. Now they need the, their little clock to tell their child a story. We read books for our kids and we tell our own stories. I'm constantly making up stories. It's mentally challenging too to make up a, a fun story that keeps the kids interested. But uh, like I said, we're going to keep this clock. It's a nice little clock. Okay, It's like a little clock radio. Um, I, I really think... Uh, I liked life when it was simpler and all these things. I really tried with an with a open mind to find something useful to do with this that wasn't stupid and useless. And I really can't. So I'm just going to keep my shopping list, my alarm clock, and maybe my, my emergency phone call if I need to make it. Um, but I guess that comes down to a little rule here. Just because you, you, can, you can do something with an automated machine does not mean you have to. Okay. Just do it the old way and, and just be happy. I mean, I don't do, are people so freed up with time now that they're just sitting around and like wondering where they went wrong in life? I don't know. So I'll do it the old fashioned way until I cannot. Do you have anything that's really useful that's not stupid, like, like sports or entertainment? I mean, is there anything truly useful? I mean, measurements, I, I, I can't remember how, to, how many ounces are in a cup. Um, I don't know. If there's something interesting, please let me know in the comments uh, and that's it. Please subscribe, hit the like, and that's it, and I'll see you next video.